Okay, for those who are joining us on the live stream, this is one of an infinite series of meetings about incremental updates to Wolfram language. We've got a bunch of topics here today. Okay, first is about generalizing, extending join across. Join across is not a function that I have to say um, I end up using that much. Um, I'm missing to bring join across the same level as join in SQL. We're only doing equi joins. Okay, who is going to discuss this? Carlo. Okay. So yeah, so the only thing that you can do with the key or key and rule is saying these two these two values have to be equal. So in, in general, you in, in SQL you're allowed to put a predicate there. So you instead of doing equal, you could do greater than right so what we're saying is those two in this case we're joining these by taking every time we see the same key in these two different associations we are joining them how so this is what is this doing here so, so basically, it's taking from the first association. So it's joining each time the the association in the first list and the second list each time key A matches. And otherwise, what's it doing? Throwing it away. Okay, so it, it keeps only those associations for which the the there is a match of that. I see. I get it. Yeah, so it actually. The, the most general one, if you want to start from the end, the most general type of join is the cross join, which we're missing, which would be, can be written with outer in, in the wrong pool from language. So that's the very end of the other notebook right now. Okay, but, but in general, wait a minute. Okay, when the keys are values, when, when these are all the same, okay, which the values associated with key A in the AI, those associated with key B in the BJ. So that's a case where the keys you are comparing are different. Exactly. But you, you know, you could do things like, for example, um, you can have on the key A, you could have a string. And on, on the key B, you could have a string pattern. And so the comparison function, rather than being equal, is string branch Q. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Determine when to allow association. So it already has a fourth argument. Yes. But but the fourth argument we still need. <laughs> okay, but so because it still applies even if So this is the outer so, case where it allows unmatched A AI and BJ. Uh, what? No, no, no. Cross is bigger than outer. Cross, really? cross is really the uh, the cross product. Outer means so just allow for missing. So it, it's actually if you click, there's a link to Wikipedia in the notebook. Join in SQL. There are examples there. No, okay, I, I, let's not look at that right now. I'm trying to understand okay. what is this here. So that one is, so imagine that key, the key on the left takes values one and two, and the key on the right takes values two and three. So they never match. But if you do outer, you're going to have one unmatched, two unmatched, unmatched three, unmatched four. So it's so. not the full cross product. I see. The, the result will be the sum, length will be the sum, not the product. As opposed to the product. Yeah. That's probably the wrong name for it there. Well, that's, that's the... Well, it's not exactly the sum, because if you have things repeated on both sides, then they will be multiplied and sort of exploded in a cross-product way, but only within the groups. Like if you have two things with the same value on the left 
and three on the right, then the end will be the combination of six, even for the inner join. Um. Okay, so hold on a second. So key collision functions. Wait a minute. Okay, so you're proposing that there be a third argument that is an alternative to these string named join specs that says what? That is the predicate. Well, it's a Boolean function with two, two arguments. Right, which is a predicate for given two keys, should they be joined? No, given two associations, should they be joined? What, really? Wait yep. a minute. Given two associations, which are, I see, in the AI and BI, but then once we are actually joining those associations, wait a minute, I see. So the key collision function applies once those associations are being joined, right? Because we're yes. just using the join function. Yes. And the join function for associations should have a key collision function. What does the join function for associations do? That's a, it's hard to give it a key collision function because it's probably a Verog's function. Yeah. Right. So given, or is there some notion of association join that we need to have? That may be as a generalization of both these things. See, this is, okay, so this is lists of associations. Okay, so what, what are you actually proposing here? So what you're proposing is that the fourth argument, no, the third argument here. Yes. What's that? Yes, third argument. Which is here allowed to be keys. Okay, there's a fourth argument here. Oh, that stays. We, you need it even if you have a function as a third argument. You need the joint spec. Because you can use the function as a third argument, then say left, right, inner, outer, cross. So how do we determine? So if this is a function, again, that function is the predicate for whether two particular associations there should be joined. And what you're saying here is that we are degenerating that predicate to just being, does this key agree between those associations? Yeah. Right, in this case. Yeah, so it shows how you can reproduce the cases that already exist in the spec using this function. Does this want to be something different, like join across by? It's not a by. I mean, actually, the predator. one we already have is a by function. This one is not a by. It's like sort. It has a yeah. I understand. Box. It has a binary operator, as opposed to this, which is the 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 by case. Yeah. Okay. Or or the. Equality case, really. Well, but you might want. Okay, so your point is, given two associations. So, so the the, the thing is really this is a predicate, um, which joins elements of a SOX one and a SOX two when pred gives true when the result of applying pred gives true. Is that correct? Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. now, applying to what? what to a SOC 1 and a SOC 2. To both. No, it's not a SOC 1. It's to the elements, which joins element. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. result of applying pred Two yes. pairs of elements, so a yes. given yes. pair of elements. Yeah. Right. 
AIB. So, J. Right. Yes. Pair of elements, which is AIBJ. So the generalization of this whole thing is a function um, it's kind of an outer when I claim. Okay, so let's let's just fill out what I mean by that. So it's the combiner function. The uh, list one, list two. And then, am I right? Am I wrong here? Then it's a predicate there. And this takes every element of list one. It, it takes pairs of elements from list one and list two. And when pred gives true, it it gives them in the final list. And it's actually a flattened outer. Yeah. And, it's more, and like, a, it's more also, like a tuples. What's that? Go ahead. That's also just the inner specification. The thing I just said. Yeah, it corresponds to JSPEC inner. Right. You know, I actually think this case is easier to understand in some ways than these cases here with individual keys. In other words, you're just taking out all possible pairs here. What function do we have? Is it groupings? Is it tuples? Which would take out all possible pairs. I mean, outer would clearly, you know, an outer F of, you know, A, B, C, D, E well, will certainly look at all possible pairs there. This is an outer with a flatten at the end, which is sure. a bit strange in an, uh, in an outer. That I, I know. I, it's not really an outer. It's right. really, but what is it? Is it a, is so it a? Outer with flatten is more like distribute. Okay. But, but the main point is that this is doing something where there's a predicate deciding what goes into that list. Yes. I, I, I'm concerned about the cases in which for a given key in list one, there will be several in list two that give true. What's going to happen then? You get it's it. not a question of a key. It's not a question of a key. What this is doing is the whole... Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. The case of associations... All right, first point is this operation of a flattened outer, in other words, taking, taking you know, pairs, an element from the first list, an element from the second list. What is the... What's our best way of doing that? Is it distribute or is it flatten of outer? Well, if you try tuples with a list of the lists, it will be similar. It's just that we return pairs rather than uh, f of them. Yes, right. Okay, because tuples doesn't have. Does tuples have an, a, an alternate head specification or not? I think it doesn't. Okay, but the point here. is that what we are saying is keep only so uh, even an even simpler case of this would be um you know something like this it would be like pairings of by the way we've got some background noise would be nice to avoid pairings of list one list two predicate okay which gives all possible pairings from list one and list two for which predicate gives true. So this is a, a, a two-dimensional version of select. So select list comma pred, right? This is multi-select of some kind. Except in select, you need to first sort of, um, you know, form everything and then select. And in this case, it will avoid those things that are not matching the condition at construction time. Well, there's no construction. Select doesn't have construction because what this is doing, the pairings here, I'm, I'm just saying in this case, if, the, if those things were elements E1, you know, let's call them A1, A2, A3, okay? 
B1, B2, okay? Then what I'm saying is, in this way of doing it, this doesn't have a function that's being applied. So this would just be A1, B2, you know, A3, B1, whatever it is, might be the only ones that satisfy, that give true with the predicate. Am I making sense? Yeah. So, I mean, that's the more general, I mean, it's that thing with a function being applied to each of those. Right, so, so I don't know what the, what is the version of join that can have a key collision function? Oh, actually, it's just association, isn't it? How, how do you do this? If you want to take two associations and, you know, A goes to one, B goes to two, and how do I do this? Do I say just association of that comma? I think it's merge what you're looking for. Oh yeah, maybe it is. Right, C goes to three. I think you want the A key or the value for A to have something different in the second one. Okay, what's going on here? You need a function to merge. It's the third argument. It's the second argument. Well, it should message if you don't get it, shouldn't it? I would think it should generate a message in that case. Well, it's probably thinking it's the operator form. Oh, yes, that's right. That's what it does think it is. Okay. But so this is not the same operation. No, because in this case, you are bound to group by keys. And for a predicate, it doesn't. it's not restricted to keys. Right. Okay, but, but so uh, just tell me again, given these two associations, right? If I were to just say join of those two associations, I get that result, right? I'm asking, how do I put the key collision function into the join? Just, do, you, do you understand what I'm asking? So that, that's one issue. We've got to figure out how we make the analog of a join with a non-trivial key collision function. Yeah? But this is a diff it's a different problem. It's a related problem because we're going to need a key collision function in the join across stuff. Oh, we already do. No, no, I know we have a key collision function join across. I'm trying to refactor join across so that it can be working so that... Right. Um, get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This should arguably have a thing that goes to the association guide page. By the way, if, uh, if the, isn't the generalization of join across then apply across? Yes, probably. Yes, it probably is. Um, Okay, so what is, oh look, catenate elements from, uh, that's the function we need. Why doesn't catenate have a key collision function? Or does it? Yeah, why doesn't catenate? Well, in the first place, it works also on lists. I don't care, but I mean, it, it, the question is, it should have a key collision function that allows it to do the right thing for associations when it has associations. But for that, it would have to only work on associations, not Why? on lists. Why? It just ignores it if it's given lists. Right? But then it looks to be a more sort of, in a more narrow case, not general no, no, enough. No, 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 no. What, what are you saying? We're saying key collision function specifies what to do with keys that collide in if it is given associations. Okay, but let, or you can have more than two associations. So how do you do that? So you, you'll need a, like an array key collision functions to choose which association to use or how? I'm not sure, but, but the key collision function, how does the key collision function usually work with? 
Was join a cross? No, no. Oh, it's only for join a cross. Well, I mean, look, clearly, right, this case of giving a function can work perfectly well. You take n keys and you return n keys, right? In fact, the general case here is very straightforward. The general case is you're given a list of the keys, of the colliding keys, and you return a new list of keys to use. You don't get a list of colliding keys. You get one colliding key. We get the no, no. This is pairs of elements. Oh, I you get, no. Yeah, you get one, and you get out two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yes, I understand. Because the list would be trivial anyway, right? Right. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, but but so let's go back over here to ask. So you say that the analog is apply across. But I'm saying that there's a function here that's that is the predicate version of outer, so to speak. Do you get what I'm saying? I think it's almost select of tuples. Okay, let's see what, whether we believe that. Okay, so select tuples. So that then let's say we can have a whole list of it's a list of lists. Yeah, a list of lists here. So that's A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And now where's the tuples? So tupo the tuples already takes that argument and it will return the list of all tuples. And now select will take the, the um, predicate. No. What is, what is... A list of lists. Okay. Oh, and now, that's right. That's very nice. Yeah, okay. And now select, it's around that with a yeah. predicate that takes each of the tuples and says yes or no. Right, exactly. So in principle, we could imagine a combined function, which is more efficient because it doesn't actually have to generate all the tuples. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting function in its own right. So in this case of the join across thing, this is, so tuples doesn't have a... Um, no, it has a number of, of uh, results. Right, but it never gets the opportunity to give it a head. Right, makes sense. Okay, so now what you're saying is, so this is the fundamental operation. And what you're saying is that there is a join version of that, or in general, an F version of that. But honestly, it's not even worth doing the F version of this. For, for the general case, you might as well just apply the F, apply at level one, the F to this thing. Exactly. Okay. So, but in the case of, of specific case of associations, you're saying, I mean, one point is that we, this would be a general join across that works with more than two associations, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let's imagine, um, I mean, let's imagine there was an apply across uh, it's, it's really, it's really, let, let's just imagine it was something like thread. I think that's quite the right name, but, but we something like this, where we would have, um, the first set of elements. Second set of elements, then there's a predicate, which determines whether to keep a pair. And then there's that third argument, which I don't understand very well. So then join across becomes thread across of join, if I'm not mistaken. And then that predicate in the simple case would be what 
What is this? Uh, except, Stephen, if you do thread across of join, you miss the opportunity to have key collision function. I'm aware because I am aware of that. Okay, so let's imagine that it was this catenate with a key collision function, which I think catenate is going to lead. Okay. Not the most beautiful way to do it, but but that, that would be the idea there. Am I making sense? Yep. Okay, so uh, and what's the fourth argument now doing? So the predicate that the this is a pretty grotesque version of that predicate, right? The thing that is going to do the and of whether Oh, for a bunch of keys. Okay, so this is the simple case of a single key that agrees, mm -hmm. right? So in general, so the simple case of this, I mean, I think it is a shame that, that join across only has pairs. Or is that not a shame? Get what I'm saying? That, that it only can deal with pairs here. In, in my opinion, it is. It's, but it will be it, uh, it will be harder to specify left and right and the outer joints in the spirit as it's done in join across if you have multiple things because you'll need to specify a complex, you know, things of how how that is going to work. Well, why? I mean, so, the left, left and right, it's just first and last. Really, is the analog of that. It's the analog of left and right. Why? Because you're either taking the first one or you're taking the last one. No, that's not, no, that's for the key collision function. But um, Leonid was speaking about the the fourth argument. Explain so, the fourth, uh, but I okay, thought the, the, fourth, fourth, the fourth argument is, so default inner means that it has to match. So okay. that's very And what does left mean? Left means that even if there is nothing that matches on the right, you keep the version on the left. I see. And then you add missing and matched for the ones that don't match. Right is the opposite. Outer is left and right. Okay. So my point has been that if you extend the, uh, you know, uh, the function to more than two sets of things, uh, two lists of things, then uh, it will be much harder to... Yeah, you basically well. can do only inner, outer, and and cross. It's difficult yeah. to, to do, like, you should call them like first, second, third, fourth, but then you also have the combinations, like in first, first and second. You know, one thing that's really a pity here is that we it, that doesn't give one much. You know, every time I look at this, I have to remember what is this really doing. Yeah, I, I think that the examples are a bit too abstract here. If you look at the examples that are, for example, in the Wikipedia page of join with employees and departments, it's a lot clearer. Well, okay, you can propose some other examples for this, but but I mean. The thing here, I mean, I'm not thrilled with the name join across. Tell me again how to think about. So, I mean, these are, it's a contingent set of joins between uh, joins in our sense of join. Join as in just, you know, you're joining one association with the other association, right? Right? That's what it's doing, correct? Yes. Okay. But it's doing it a little bit more like complicated way, exactly because of all the other specs you can give. Well, no, 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 no. It's 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 doing I mean an alternative name could have been something like join tuples
And if we did something like that... Well, okay. that, I mean, join tuples isn't bad, except for the fact that the only thing that actually does what tuples does, we don't support it, which is cross-join. Well, okay, but obviously we can support that. But the issue here is... That would deal with the case... Okay, so this case... Okay? And then the simplest cases, there's a predicate there, right? And the issue is, how can we have representations of that predicate that are fairly simple? So, join tuples. Let's imagine we did that. Okay, there's a predicate there. Now, what else do we need? If we did this join tuples thing, that is basically saying, I mean, we could even do that. These things could perfectly well be lists if we wanted to, but, but let's assume it's associations. Um, it may not be the best name, but let's let's just try to understand the function. Okay. Okay, so... We're trying to understand what that predicate thing is. And we've got these cases here. Join those ones in which the key is the same. You guys are silent here. So You've got, in general, you want to have, so, so that one would be hash one sub, it's actually more complicated than this, right? Because it's, it's for all of the hash sub i in that list, there, that particular key is the same, right? So this is the simple case with two, right? Stephen, uh, one alternative idea. I'm thinking, I'm looking at tuples, tuples with association, and it does nothing right now. Is there any possibility that we could reuse that freedom there? It's possible. Tuples with a with a list of associations. What should we do? Well, no, it's a, this is a different case because this is lists of lists of associations. See what I'm saying? Lists of lists. Oh, I see. Okay, look, let's, th this is going to take another hour to, to go through this particular thing. Um, I agree that it's an important thing. I have never liked this function. We kind of added it as a, a kind of a, you know, let's have something that is like SQL functionality for this. Okay, I think we need to make it our own in a more effective way. And that requires, you know, some generalization and some understanding of how I mean, my guess is that there's going to be a join tuples and a join tuples by, effectively. Am I making sense? Yep. And that this by is effectively, you know, just saying key there would be the thing that would use... Yeah, I mean, by would be, well, hash of key would certainly do it. That makes sense, Carlo. You understanding? Uh, I'm not not happy about that because hash of key, and if you allow that, that's a unary function, and then the equality is kind of implied. No, no, that's what by means. Oh, okay. Do you understand? There are two cases. There's the predicate case, which takes an unary function. Yes, no, sorry. Yeah. Okay. But in I mean, that this case, is analogous to sort well. and sort by, right? Yeah. Well, in that case, just explicit capital K key works. For which? To apply to a function, to an association. 
Oh, I see, because it applies like that, you're saying. Yeah. But okay. also, Stephen, if we even if we design these general functions, the problem with join across uh, will still remain because I don't care. We're going to throw join across in the trash. We can't because, uh, for instance, for what we are doing right now for SQL, we can't support the general spec for the functions you are planning to design. Yes, you can. They're just multiple join crosses. Well. there will be problems in like a big impedance mismatch, I think, between what we can support, what we need, and what this general functionality will provide. Okay, you know what? The only difference is we're having N, N elements in the list rather than just two. Right? And clearly you can do that by just going through in pairs. But that's not the main point here. That's not the main point. The main point is you've asked for a generalization of join across that is essentially this, right? Well, we didn't ask for a several. No, 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 no. You want the, the case where there are only two elements on this list. Yes. I, that, that's fine. I don't care. You know, if, if that's all that SQL can support, which I don't believe, you know, so be it. But that's not the function we're going to have. Right. So just because SQL is too lame to deal with that, which it isn't, because you can obviously do it in pairs. But but let, let's let's keep going here because we're trying to make something which people can actually understand. Right? Yeah. yeah I, I certainly don't mind. We're... All I'm saying is that these are somewhat different problems. They are related, but they're not the same. I, I think that the biggest problem really is that joint tuples probably will not have that fourth argument J spec. Because yeah, that's, that's what I said. Years to specify. And I mean, there is still value in, in having that. Also, join across gives you the guarantee that the thing you get out is, let's say, array like, that all the associations will have the same keys. The tuples version, I'm not sure. Well, I think it, but by the way, someone is asking on the live stream about data sets and what this does on data sets. Does anybody even know? You mean join, join across some data sets? Yes, like join across between if there are two arguments, if the arguments are two data sets, because data sets can be lists of associations, obviously. I'm not even sure it works in two data sets. Right, but should it? It presumably should. It might. But on the, on the other hand, if data sets are nested, deeply nested. No, then it's hopeless. Hopefully. So that's probably the reason why it wasn't generally implemented. Okay. Actually, what this person is asking if, if data sets, if it works, if join, If something like SQL join works on data sets, we should make that clearer in the documentation. One of the problems there is that we don't have a specific tabular type of data set that will be strictly two dimensional. Yeah, I understand. Okay, but let's just come back to this for a minute, okay? So we've got these two functions conceptually, join tuples and join tuples by. I think I understand those functions and what they do. Right, so this one has an implicit equality, just like sort by has an implicit comparator. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Right, and so now the question is, the the part that we haven't got, um, is this. Uh, so, for example, to get this case. associated with all the keys are the same. So that might be some kind of, uh, you know, special syntax here for, um, I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but, but um, uh, to deal with that case. But now this case for the more general, the more general J spec, how do I think about that here?
Do you see what I'm saying? Only, okay, so this one here is allow only those for which they match. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing is we're auto-filling with a missing unmatched when it isn't you could, there. You could specify sort of a list of such specs, assume that they are applied sort of pairwise, like for one and two, then two and three, and so on. Okay, but hold on. Don't we already have, just like we have key collision function, right, which is, don't we already have something which has this notion? That is, that... What, what you're given here, what you're fed to the predicate, what the predicate gets. Okay, so this is the question, is, is what does the predicate get? So it is, um, do you see what I'm saying? What, what, does it, what is it given when there is no corresponding matching Allow AI for which there is no matching BJ. So that means that the predicate, that even when the predicate fails there, no, but wait, wait, wait a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that means that even when the predicate is false, you want to keep the thing on the left or the thing on the right. Yeah, but what does it mean to keep? So what it means okay. to keep is that your okay. end join. Look, look, look at the look at the example. Um, there is an example with the left. Yeah, that one. So basically, the, there's one there that doesn't match. Okay. C goes to X. Okay. So effectively, this is useful when you're doing something like... No, no, I don't understand this case. I don't understand what's doing here. Okay, what is so it let, let me give you a less dry example. Imagine you're, you're taking all the employees and joining them with all the employees at Wolfram. You don't have a manager. Inner would drop you out. But sorry, isn't this just the case that A it goes to two and A goes to three do, do not match? So it chooses A goes to two because that's the left one. No, 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 no that's not the case. Why does it say C goes to unmatched? I don't understand where that okay, is. Yeah, yeah. the, the way it works is imagine you have a, a, a list of association where you have employee ID, manager ID, and then you want to match. You have the, the arrow, right? So you have uh, uh, the, the rule. So uh, employee goes to manager. Now, if you have an employee that doesn't have a, a manager because he's the CEO, inner would drop it from the list. Instead, if you do it this way, you get, uh, you get nothing for the manager. You get missing and matched. And for all the keys associated with the, with the manager. Say, I don't know, the tenure. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, but I, I'm not, I'm still not completely getting it. So walk me through in more theoretical terms here in join tuples, okay, where there is a predicate. What is the third argument really doing? What is the general case of the third argument? Do, do you understand my question? Yes. Okay, so. There is a okay, so if you have three, there is a version of this which is first, second, third, let's say, that says keep all the so, so if you say first, for example, keep a1, a2, a3, even if there is no matching b1, b2, or c1, or c2. So the general okay. one will be a function that will be giving you a list of booleans saying which ones have to be true to keep the entire thing. Yeah, no, no. Okay. no predicate, no, look, predicate is telling you, I don't understand why this third argument is not part. Okay, so what you're doing is you're, you're filling in missing stuff. 
even when the predicate doesn't say to do the join. No. Yes. Yeah, I mean, when it says don't do the join, you're saying I'm ignoring that. I'm going to do the join because I'm manufacturing something that is joinable. Right? Yes. Yes, except except that you are doing that in a separate stage so that it's not a multiplication. It's like you first do a join, which basically kind of multiplies things. And then you add things from the left or from the right, like a sum. So it's like multiply. Well, well, okay, that, that you're thinking implementationally. Let's not think that way. Because what we're thinking about the predicate determines which tuples, okay? Pred determines which tuples are kept. Okay, so what you, what you have to imagine is that f for each of the tuples, there is, there is a last element, which is like kind of a jolly. Kind of a what? Of a joker. A joker, yes, yeah. okay. It's a, it's I'm, wild. I'm, I'm only guessing what the translation from Italian of joker, is. Uh, never mind. The, yeah, <laughs> anyway, the, yeah. Um, okay. So it's it's kind of a wild card, so it always matches, and it's determined by the last argument whether it's kept in the end or not. I think this isn't quite general enough. I think I think there's a better way to think about this, because what what's happening is, okay, which tuples are kept? So, for example, the 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 join here might be a two b two c one. That might be one of the things you're joining together. Am I making sense? So we might be saying catenate A2, B1, C, C2, let's say. Okay? Might be one of the ones that is kept according to the predicate. Yes. But okay. if, you, if you specify, if you say that the A ones are special, then you want something that works like pad, pad right. And so you keep A1, if, even if it didn't match with anything, and then you pad it. So yeah, right. I understand. I understand. I understand. So what, what this is, is even if the predicate doesn't say, even if this predicate, predicate determines which tuples are kept, right? Even if the predicate, if predicate, if the predicate fails on a tuple, why is the tuple being be rewritten? Then you're going to end up with catenate of essentially A2 filler, filler. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, and, uh, and the spec, basically the spec, when you say left, you're... How right, do you know that the predicate is right, failing left? Hold on, the only thing you know is the predicate fails on the triple in this case, right? Mm -hmm. So you're saying even when the predicate fails on the triple, I'm going to manufacture a fake triple that has filler which elements that has filler for all the keys in a2 is that correct no it has filler for all the keys so it has filler so that the resulting thing is is an array so it has fill, filler for all the keys in b and c which would are be not no also. not but no no be specific b1 and c2 because the b sub i's might have different keys in them no the different B sub I's might have different keys in them. No, they, they can't. Why not? I don't know. At least for join across, they can't. But, uh, okay, but I, I'm trying to understand the general case here. Yeah, but I, I don't know if you can make the general case. Like no, no, that. I'm trying to understand the general case, right? So in the general case, they do not have to have the same keys. I think that's correct, because the example you have on the notebook on your right doesn't have the same keys, the B's and the C's. I think that, No, they do. They do no, not. They do not. They have Bs and Cs. The, the example, the, the next one, the one with the left. I think that, that's a confusing example because it has two lists with two associations. So what, what are you talking about? Like within so the, the list, they all have the same keys. The, each list is an array. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But Otherwise known as each list is a data set, could be thought of as a data set that is a squared, you know, a rectangular data set. It's I, I, association transposable. I think, Stephen, can you change the, the capital X's to lowercase x and lowercase y? 
because I think that that's a confusing example, but we, we can fix it. So the, the lowercase x and lowercase y. This one here? No, no, no. The, the, the other capital X, just, just below, so that it's different from the other ones. Uh, lowercase y. That one there, lowercase y. Yes, exactly. Now, and then I evaluate that, and now change, you know, copy the examples and change left to right. I think this clear, clears things up for me. C goes to Y. Okay, so that's just purely joining those things. Mm -hmm. So it always takes one. it always takes the, as a blueprint one of these lists. In this case, it's the second one, and then it fills the missing keys with missing. I think the confusing thing is that because we have two and two, two associations yeah. and two lists, yeah. left and right is confusing. Yeah, I know. So we should fix that example. So if I put here, A goes to four, C goes to Q or something. Okay. Now, meanwhile, if I do that with right, it will generate three things, I claim. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right guarantees that you always have at least as many as in, there are in the second one left, at least. And the second element. One. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So, fine. So, That's using, okay, so it's a question of which one do you use as the template? Is that correct? Yes, yeah. in a sense. Or, or rather, no, 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 wait, the template is always ABC in this case. It's more like which ones should never be deleted. Because the template, if you do inner, outer, left, or right, there it's always ABC. Well, the difference is that what you're saying is basically never delete something on the left, even if it's unmatched. Carla, Steven meant something else as a template. For left and right, you can think of one of these two collections as being a template. Yes. And then for outer, for outer, we'll have to think a bit differently about this. For outer, the template is a, is a kind of a, a join of left and right in a way. Right. By the way, this missing unmatched, and since this is quite like padding, maybe we should gain an option to say, instead of missing unmatched, I want zero there. Yes, that's a reasonable idea. Zero? Well, or whatever it is, something different. Whatever, like a default. Oh, okay. Values. Right, okay, so I'm sorry, let's go back here to this again for a second. Um. Okay. Okay. Look, let me make a meta comment here. You know, join across was a unnecessarily rapidly designed function. Sadly, not even considered experimental here. You know, it's too close to, you know, it was done to pander to basically SQLism. And I don't think we fully understood, you know, what the clean specification of it is. The good news is we're now doing that, so let's go ahead. Um, so this, you know, for me, this join tuples, join tuples by thing is pretty easy to understand what it's doing. It's a pretty easy description. It takes all tuples from here. And yes, we can do only the, the binary case at the beginning. All pairs of AI BJ such that that predicate is true. Okay, that's rather easy to understand. Actually, I think you can generalize this enough so that we cover all cases also used by join across last argument. All you have to do is to specify a sort of a list which ones, if for which ones of these we want to keep them even if they are unmatched. 
So for the three of them, you can say you keep one and two, but not three. And that would mean that... All right, so let, let's, let's try writing that down, okay? So... Um, this is the list of, let's say, always keep, always kept, always kept, a terrible option name. But this is always kept. And, and then it's like default element, arrow, you know, missing unmatched or whatever it is. Yeah, and that would effectively mean left join in the first pair and right join in the second pair. And in the in the last pair, yes. But but okay. But so wait a minute. The predicate. So even if the predicate fails, this is saying. I don't quite understand. Even when the predicate fails on a given pair, for example, or a given triple, this is saying when the predicate fails make up something on which the predicate would succeed. You know, you know I, I'm, I'm thinking that this, this, uh, this specification is not enough because like you could do, if you say always kept one, two, three, is that outer, outer, or is it? I'm not sure, but, but let's, let's try to understand what it means. When the predicate fails, invent an element on which the predicate would succeed. Is that correct? That's no, basically not, what not you're saying. Really. It's more like you, you do all the things with the predicate, and then you check that you matched all the one and all the threes, and if you didn't, then you basically append them. No, no, but, but let's be very specific here. Let's be very specific. In the end, the thing is going to say join A2, B2, C1, for example. Okay, or catenate those things. Yeah, right. What I'm telling you is that if join of A, let's say, if you're doing A1 with B2 and C2, yes, and you have always kept one, but you've already, it depends on whether you've already matched A1 with something else. No, 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 that's not right. Because, because we're looking at specific, okay, these things have many keys in them, right? We're not looking at the point when we're doing the catenation. We're no longer looking inside the predicate to see what keys it talked about. No, no, no. That's not what I meant. What I'm oh, saying. But, but, but I just want to see what the code looks like. No, no. But, but see, what I'm telling you is that imagine that you're doing A1, B1, C1, and that matches. And then you do A1, B2, C1, and that doesn't match. Even if what you do you mean by match? It's not matching. It fails the predicate. It fails the predicate. Right. The predicate gives. So if, if the false. second fails the predicate, but the first hasn't failed, then you don't do anything. I'm sorry, I don't understand this. So let's imagine it's not, it's not that, wait, 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 wait. A2, B1, C2 fails the predicate. Yes. Okay. And then okay. you have to ask yourself, let's say you, we, you want to keep all the A's. If A2 succeeded elsewhere, then you don't need to add it. What are you talking about? This is how it works. <laughs> oh, but that's crazy. Okay, so wait a second. So you're saying... Oh my God, what a messy, well, complicated a, thing. No, no, let's try to be more precise. Let's try to make it more sensible. Okay, what you're saying is that that's totally weird. It's what, not weird. What is the piece of code? What's the piece of code that tells you? You're saying if I ever kept A2. Yes. Oh, then totally you don't need to weird. put it with missing a match because it has matched. What? Yes, you only keep, you only use that rule for missing a match for those of your A's that didn't match anything using the predicate. So you first sort of do the predicate part. Okay, and okay, you... okay, okay. So what you're done saying is that's really weird. Okay. The, then that... look at, wait a minute, wait a second. Then look at, the AI which never made it through any predicate, right? Is that correct? Yes. Weird. 
it's like a padding, you know. But uh, no, it's not like padding. It, it's kind of like like padding. It's well, padding in the other direction. But it, it's if you think about it, it's really useful because when uh, so if you think about the example of people like managers and employees, you absolutely in most cases you absolutely don't want to drop the CEO from the table of employees, even if that person doesn't have a manager. And you don't even want to duplicate all the people who do have a manager. Well, you can fix a database and say that uh, the CEO is his own manager. Or, or her. Yeah, but okay, okay, fine, or whatever. But, but, but let, let's, let me, again, I want to understand at a more theoretical level what this means. Look at the AI which never made it, which never gave true with any predicate. Wow. That's a really weird criterion. That, help me make that less weird. So in other words, we're looking at the predicate goes and looks at every pair, let's imagine, or every n tuple. I, I just don't understand I think, the kind I of think, non locality uh, of that. Stephen, Stephen, I think the one part of the confusion is that for um, to understand the, this left and right, we have to think in terms of sets. So kind of a set of matched things and then the set of unmatched. While when you are thinking about the predicate, you are kind of considering zooming into one single thing out of them. So that's why it makes it a bit confusing. That's thing. Okay. So you're Excuse saying, okay, so, so here's, let, let's think about it a different way. Okay. Let's imagine that there's the, the predicate before we do any operations, right? In, in this case here, Okay, we could ask of these, which ones survive? Right, so some of those may not survive when we apply the predicate. Get what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. And then you separately consider those that won't survive later. Right, so, so we've broken this into a group that survives and a group that doesn't survive. Right. Okay. And now of the ones that are non survivors, what do we do with okay so so okay so let's let's imagine okay so then then the, what we want to say here is um consider the tuples which survive the predicate okay those are fine those are just in the results then also consider the tuples that fail the predicate. Okay, so we have one of those tuples. Let's say it's that tuple fails the predicate. Okay, now how do we modify this? How do we, what, what are we being told to do? So that, okay, so imagine that this is um, an example of a tuple that fails the predicate, right? So now tell me what to do to that tuple. So you when I'm only including need it. kind of a template for B and C that will be kind of filled with missings. And so you do catenate, but not with some real B and C, but with a right. So those exactly. Templates. So what we need is a essentially a failure function here that is applied to a tuple. Okay, so then what we would do is apply the failure function to any tuple that doesn't pass the predicate to modify it in some way that we specify. Is that correct? Well, if you generalize, then yes. But the question is, do we want to keep the constraint that we start with arrays and we return an array? If we do, then that that uh, function can't be arbitrary. Okay, fine. But what feature does that function have to have? That it returns a list of the same length, right? Yeah. 
Is that correct? That it's a list of the same length, or is it something more detailed that involves the keys being uh, conforming? That de that depends on which constraints you want to preserve. If you want to preserve the array constraint, then it has to be more specific than that. Okay, but so but but maybe it's a function. Maybe it's more of a uh, an auto mapped function, so to speak, that will just put in. I mean, right now, do we have something which will fluff out an association to have certain keys in it? Do you get what I'm saying? Like add some missing keys with the missing values. Yeah, I think we do have that. I think take does that. See what I'm saying? So we want to. Um, I think uh, it's union that's doing that. Okay. Fine. Uh, often. Okay, to make the association conforming. I mean, th th so what you're saying is, okay, there's the predicate that says, great, just put me in the output, right? This is the thing that says how to modify something that fails the predicate. And yeah. one possibility for failure function is it just drops it. Okay, another possibility it is it tries to patch it up. Am I making sense? Yeah. But then the also it is sort of clear that like left, the, when you have just two of them, just A's and B's, then it's kind of clear what left means, what right means. Oh, what, it? what do they mean? Tell me what they mean. So left means that you apply a failure function to all, like the set of failed A's. Nope, it doesn't. It's a set of failed B's. In the left uh, case, it's the set of failed B's that you apply it to. No, because you're patching. No, uh, you're patching the B's. The you're A's patching you the keep. B's, but you're applying to A's. No, but you don't need to apply it to the A's because the A's are just fine. No, no, no. A's split into a set that matches, that survives the predicate and the set that doesn't. Okay. And so you apply failure function to all A's that don't survive the predicate. But you patch them with the certain, you know, certain template that comes from B's. That's not what I thought left did. I thought it's what right did. No. Left means that you keep all A's but for non-surviving A's, you patch them with the, you know, the stuff that comes from B's, but missing values. Like keys come from B's, but they have missing values. Okay, so what you're effectively saying is that what you would do is there's a key union, the union of all the keys in the A's, the B's, and the C's. Yes, but 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 I mean, to unify to more than two arguments. I I, I think that the look. My point about more than two arguments. I don't care about the implementation right now. I think it is useful for understanding what's going on to look at the more than two argument case. Sure, sure. But still, on one thing which I'm a bit concerned is that also I think Carl expressed this uh, doubt that it might be that uh, the general spec that we have for you know binary operations like we have for join across might not uh it might not be possible to express the same if you have more than two okay you, you might be right, right but i don't think you're right about that i think it will be clearer with more than two we'll understand what we're actually doing which you guys don't well, really understand this patching wait, up operation i, I mean i meant slightly different still i meant you want to look at it because i can paste some code in the chat to see what's happening when you do multiple ones no, I, well, we, we're going to have to wrap in a moment here, unfortunately. So, 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 so let me just finish the sentence. You know, yeah. What I wanted to say is that we might come up with the examples which are combined from pairwise joints, which we will never be able to reproduce with the joints with three arguments or more, uh, no matter what spec we invent. Okay, you might be right. All I'm trying to do is to understand this in a, in a slight generalization of the right-left thing, which I think sure, is confusing sure. us, okay? 
So I don't care whether we decide in the end that we're only going to take the two case. I personally think the end case is going to be less difficult to understand than the two case, but we'll find out. Right, so I just want to understand, last thing here, when there is a failure function, right? The failure function deals with those tuples which didn't pass the predicate, right? Yes. So please tell me what you do with those tuples. So it depends on which which type of spec okay, you have. So let's so, say the left spec. So you apply failure function to all non-surviving A's. No, no, the failure function is being applied to tuples. So let's take the case with the left spec with, with a pair, right? So here's the thing it's applied, the failure function is being applied to. What do I do now? Well, in this case, uh, assuming that all B's have the same keys, or or maybe not, in any case, what you do, you take the keys from B and you fill them with missing. So, is that, so can somebody put themselves on mute, please? Could you put yourself on mute if you have that background noise? It wasn't coming from me. Okay. So, uh, so what you do is that you take the keys from B and you could, supply could, them please, with missing please, values. Put yourself on mute if you have a separate conversation going. Go ahead. But you take okay. all the things from B. So you take the key union of all the B sub I's. Is that correct? Well, you take that particular B in your case. If you are applying it to A and B, like A2 and B1, you take keys from B and you set all values for B1 to missing. And then you join A2 and this new missing kind of skeleton of B1 with missing values. Okay, so hold on. You take B1. Yeah, and you replace all values of B1 to, with missing. Let's take a specific example here, okay? So let's sure. say we say A goes to the first thing here is A1, well, let's call it A, KA1 goes to 1, KA2 goes to 2, etc. right? Yes. And then what there we've is, got for the Bs is... Stephen, there is, yeah? Stephen there, there is one important thing here. Once we think about A's and B's, we still think about tuples. But I have to point out that this failure operation is not done on tuples. It's done. It's not done on the multiplied, uh, you know, things. It's done on just a set of miss, like set of non-surviving A's. But there is no notion of what. Okay, B so are. the set of non-surviving A's. Your claim is that it is basically being done to pad it out. Yes. Give it all the. Um, so, in other words, because this is essentially a kind of a sum operation, which is sort of added to a product, the only the, the only way you can do it is by imposing that all Bs have the same keys. Because then it doesn't matter with which B you are, from which B you are sort of constructing this missing template. But do, does the B have all? Does are you assuming that every key in B is missing then? Yes. Every, every value in, 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 in yes in. yes but my point has been that all set of b's and all set of a's and all set of c's will have to have the same keys like among themselves so they have to be arrays otherwise this operation doesn't make sense well you're saying that among the a sub i all a sub i have the same set of keys all b yes. sub i have the same set of keys same different set of Possibly a different set of keys, but same within themselves. Well, same within the B sub I's. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. And then in that case, it doesn't matter which particular B you take to create. Uh, oh, I understand. That's why I keep on talking about key union and so on. Yes. Yes, right, right. right. So could there be missing? Okay. So, but, but you were saying the whole argument from Carlo was that some of those keys could be missing in one of the A sub I's. That was his whole point. But yes, and a, so you, you need to take a key union. That's right. So you take the key union of each of those elements there. Right. And then you're padding. Okay, so the, exactly. the, the key point, so to speak, not to make a pun, but the key point is that um, first, 
okay, the A sub I, B sub I, et cetera, must each be essentially rectangular with respect to keys. Right. When they are not, padding function must say how to pad them. Right. Okay, now, given that, but there's two different things going on here. One is that a key is missing, and the other is that a key doesn't agree. I don't think you, you mean want... does, doesn't agree as per predicate. You mean yes, that's correct. Yes, exactly. And one is product, and another is kind of a padding or a sum, if you wish, in terms of sets. So it's kind of like you you split the sets of set of A into two different subsets, the ones which match, and the ones or like pass the predicate and the ones which don't, and those which pass the predicate they are sort of multiplied in a way by some different set like A by B, but the ones which don't, they are sort of just padded and added to the result. I understand what you're saying, but it's a hack. Let's try and understand it without a hack. I think there are two different things going on. One is that if these are not rectangular, they get padded, okay? But then there's a separate decision to make about whether you include something that was padded in, so to speak. Whether you consider it to be a match, does the predicate then when does so that's a pre-processing step you can think of that as a pre-processing step sure then when does the predicate um in the join tuples by case decide that a missing matches with an actual value i think that's entirely up to the predicate no no i i agree i agree but that's that's the choice so the thing number one that you're doing is you're you're puffing this out to be rectangular okay right and you have some way of doing that okay that's thing number one i think i understand that and the predicate can decide whether it will allow missings in its comparison or not right whether it will make whether it will say if it's uh three compared to missing it can either say that always matches or it doesn't always match make sense yeah okay so there's this padding function now interestingly you're right that this is more like some kind of association pad Well, I actually meant some di some different padding. I made uh, analogy with what uh, with what left and right are doing. It's not the same padding as what you are now discussing. Okay, but I think this is a meaningful function because this is like uh, you know pad left or something, which by the way has has that name. But if I say pad left A B C like this, I'll get that. Yeah, so basically you're saying that you can give a second argument a list of keys and that will pad any association with the missing values for those keys if they are if they're missing. That's right. But so yeah. now that's the first operation. Now the second thing you're saying is something different, I think. So this is saying go ahead, what was the second thing you're saying? So this yeah, is the, so the, step. Se the second thing is that after you've went through the entire process of application of the predicate, you can see you can split all A's into the two sets, the set that uh, survived the predicate and the set that didn't. No, but, but the predicate, hold on a second, the, the set where for some choice of B and C, the A made it into a final result. Yeah, it's enough that it made it at least for one choice uh, to be yeah, considered. Yeah, so that's the weird thing. That's the weird part of this. Well, that is, that is, there are. It's a little weird, yes. yes but if it's if weird. It, but if we think of in terms of sets rather than individual things, then no, it's. Wait, 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 wait. Divide the A sub I into ones that made it in some way into the final result. versus ones that did not.
so okay i think this we have to look at this another time but we need more time on this specific thing yeah that's true i i'm going to uh send this to sushma i guess yep um and you need to reschedule something mm -hmm. this is okay. going to take a solid hour to do this um I think we have made considerable progress, and I think that we will eventually get something which is really quite easy to understand and easy to explain and doesn't look, you know, this function has the feature that you might say, why on earth do we want this? Um, okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Onward. Thanks. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 bye.